The Central Bank of Nigeria, which commenced operations in 1958, is Nigeria's apex bank and is tasked with the primary responsibility of formulating all monetary policies alongside the monitoring and maintenance of price stability within the economy. In a bid to carry out its primary responsibility, the central bank has adopted the tool of development finance to aid the development and sustenance of a vibrant real sector. The central bank foray into the development finance dates back to 1977 with the introduction of the Agriculture Credit Guarantee Scheme. The decision of the bank at that time was aimed at strengthening the agricultural sector as it is the building block of all vibrant economies around the world. The central bank has subsequently launched several other developmental initiatives through its Department of Development Finance targeted at all the sectors within the economy, including manufacturing, human capacity development, funding for small and medium enterprises. Simply put, the Central Bank of Nigeria, rather than merely overseeing financial regulatory issues, went further to provide financial support to strategic sectors of the national economy. In an attempt by the Central Bank of Nigeria to achieve um, exchange rate stability um, or price stability or macroeconomic stability as the case may be, it is important that the central bank in its decision-making process ensure and, and sees to it that the decisions that it takes, how does it translate into the lives of the people? How does it result in the creation of employment or increase in creating employment? How does it result in improved economic and industrial development in, in, in the country? How does it help to lift the lives of our people from poverty um, into um, gainful life, gainful living. That is the entire essence. The majority of uh, risk sector um, businesses, activities, don't have access to financial services. And uh, what we do, Central Bank having seen that, uh, have to intervene in that area. Um, particularly micro, small and medium enterprises, manufacturing firms, don't have access to financial services. They are not able to access funds to carry out their various businesses and activities. And that's our major focus. We create the enabling environment by developing policies. We, like I said, we develop schemes and programs that provide resources, financial resources, that could be assessed by these various uh, um, uh, um, entrepreneurs in the risk sector of the economy. Prior to the year 2007, it appeared that development finance had silenced its critics and proved to be a resounding success. But then came a devastating blow that shook the very foundations of economies all over the world. The financial downturn of Western economies snowballed and threatened to destroy the yet fragile Nigerian economy. Then in the process of reform, instead of throwing in the towel, the federal government bravely raised the bar with regards to development financing. It broke new ground as good luck Jonathan took office as president in 2010 with what is now known as Rail Sector Intervention Funds. One of the crowning achievements of the CBN in this pioneering approach is the Power and Airlines Intervention Fund, HIFE, introduced in the year 2010 to motivate and stimulate private sector investment in the power and airline sectors. If you look at the central bank mandate, apart from the issue of price stability, the center also is concerned about sustainable economic development. And generally, we observe that one of the major issues in terms of making Nigeria a competitive country globally is that the level of infrastructure still needs, a lot needs to be done. And we are all aware that infrastructure is critical for development. And also it has been a major cost of production. In fact, it has been ascertained that the cost of infrastructure in the production actually is higher than even the issue of finance. So it was set up to actually ameliorate the situation by providing uh, sources of energy to the manufacturing sector of Nigeria. Uh, that's for the power aspect of the power. Then the headlands intervention, as at the time uh, the scheme was set up in 2010, uh, we found that the banking industry 
is actually was actually uh, exposed to the headlines to the tune of 262.5 billion naira, out of which 84.5 billion naira was not performing. And uh, if you look at that, that was a huge amount that, uh, if not taken care of, would actually impact negatively on the performance of the banking uh, sector. The main aims of the fund are to accelerate the development of electric power with emphasis on the industrial clusters of the country, fast track growth in the aviation sector, promote additional investments for the target sectors, and improve the supply and generation of power for the comfort of Nigerians. In this regard, the performance of the fund so far has eclipsed the status of being impressive to breathtaking. In implementing the Power and Aviation Intervention Fund, the CBN mandates the Bank of Industry as its managing agent and provides 300 billion naira facility for investment in debentures issued by the Bank of Industry BOI. The funds are disbursed to eligible projects at concessionary interest rates of not more than 7.0% and a tenure of up to 15 years. Under the Power and Aviation Intervention Fund, uh, the Bank of Industry was appointed as the managing consultant, managing agent uh, to manage the day-to-day -day, uh, activities relating to uh, the disbursement under the fund. Uh, you recall that uh, the African Finance Corporation was also appointed as the technical advisor. Okay, so the way it goes is that the participating banks apply on behalf of their customers, you know, to the Bank of Industry. Bank of Industry evaluates the package in terms of completeness of the documentation. We pass it over to the technical advisors, AFC, who then assess, you know, the technical quality of the of the proposal. Once they are okay with that, they come back to Bank of Industry and then we uh, recommend to Central Bank of Nigeria for disbursement. The government's investment in critical sectors of the economy, designed to drive productivity and growth, is also carefully monitored to ensure its continued viability. There's a team that we have put in place, you know, which is made up of the Central Bank, the AFC, the Bank of Industry, and we visit each of the projects at least once a quarter, you know, just to monitor what is going on and we actually produce a report, you know, which goes back to the Central Bank of Nigeria. That ensures that we're able to identify uh, any issues that may arise, you know, uh, from the projects in terms of challenges and we can very quickly, you know, address those issues. The structure is that um, technically the Central Bank of Nigeria um, invested in a debenture issued by Bank of Industry. Bank of Industry is a development finance institution in the country, a former development finance institution, and the Central Bank Act allows Central Bank to invest in debentures issued by such DFIs. So Central Bank bought um, zero coupon, five, 500, 500 billion zero coupon debenture of Bank of Industry, and made Bank of Industry to be the managing agent of the fund while Africa Finance Corporation, AFC, was made the, uh, was, was made the uh, um, technical advisor. We will be taking a look at five different companies that have taken part in the scheme and how this has benefited them in the areas of growth, expansion, capacity and employment. Without the Power Intervention Fund, we may not be able to really start production because of the experience and challenges with 
you know, the national electricity supply. But for the PAIF intervention, we were able to have our own generator using local, you know, natural gas in Nigeria and makes power supply very consistent. That is the most important thing. We do not have to stop, start, stop, and start. There is power all the time. And that makes production to be continuous. And currently, the installed capacity is about 700,000 metric tons of coro steel, with an additional 350,000 uh, tons recently you know, installed and will commence in another uh, few weeks. This is all made possible by the existence of the Wemco power plant, which generates 52 megawatts of electricity, more than enough to generate energy for the production of steel used in building materials and many other metal products. The plant is a direct consequence of the current administration's policy through the CBN Power and Aviation Intervention Fund. What made uh, the coal roasting possible is that we looked at the usage. It is a product that we create large downstream local usage, particularly for those who are doing small businesses, you are galvanizing, you are welding, you know, pipes, you are uh, making whatever steel product uh, that you need to use steel for. Coral steel is the raw material for this. And it's going to create a lot of wealth and employment for Nigerians. Even as the private sector gains the benefits of CBN's intervention fund through the provision of stable electricity for factories and other manufacturing processes, the welfare of the general public has also tremendously improved. My name is Tony Kualola. I'm the chief of, chief of the office of Island Power Limited. We are the operators of the Island Power Project, which is a 10 megawatt installed capacity generation plant. It generates power under a public-private partnership with the Lagos State Government. To fully appreciate the impact of the intervention fund scheme on the life of the average Nigerian, we must recall the way things used to be. When we started, as I said, we were barely able to generate 1.5, mainly financial issue problems. The power sector was new. Uh, commercial banks were very drawn back. They didn't understand the business. This is a long-term funding, funding business. Uh, so when we had to pay commercial rates for to run the plant, that was quite quite the challenge. But as I said, when the intervention fund came in, when we obtained the intervention fund, we were able to triple our generation because we were able to maintain our plants better, spend a lot more money on operations and maintenance, thereby allowing us to also even expand our uh, reach to over two times where we were at the beginning. The impact has been great. When I say great is that uh, we find petty traders selling under the streetlights till 2 a.m. Because there's light. The, pet, the small economics of the Lagos Island area, you know, people are now able to know that, oh, I can be out here, I can always get what I want out here at any time of the day. Because the street light, because the lights are on around the clock, especially at night, um, crime has more than, reduced by more than half in the area. Uh, the the locals are more than happy to have those lights on all the time. Even when we do our impact studies, the hospitals are a lot more friendly now for the fact that they have electricity around the clock. You know, there are people that even during that in the in the waiting rooms of the general hospital, the ACs are on, you know, the, the atmosphere just changes. What electricity does, it's far beyond just what you can see. And in, right now, it's all thanks to the fact that we're able to manage our expenses with lower, fund, with lower funding and we're able to achieve these things. As we have noted, power is crucial to the industrial sector of the economy. But in spite of previous administrations grappling with the problem, it is only now that light has appeared in a long tunnel of despair. When we got the information that, yes, um, um, CBN, um, 
is actually supporting um, businesses um, in Nigeria. And um, we look into the, um, what I would call the criteria set by the CBN, and um, UNICEF fits into it. And then um, prior to that, we were actually battling with um, high financial expenses. And um, we look at it that, oh, this is an uh, opportunity for this company to actually reduce um, its uh, financial expenses. Uh, because at that time, we were paying an interest rate of close to 22% per annum. And uh, with the CBN intervention, um, the, the maximum interest rate is actually 7%. And uh, not only that uh, we're going to reduce our financial statement, I mean financial expenses, also it helps to, to plan our cash flow. And with CBN intervention of coming in with a fund to support businesses, we could um, then extend the repayment period, which we, know, we, which we normally call the tenor of loan, to up to seven, I mean 10, uh, 10 years. So that's again is an added advantage which we have to really buy in and it's really helping the, the organization. What this means in general is that cement at Unisim costs far less to produce and therefore cheaper to purchase. This implies that more people can afford to build their own homes. Cement is the builder's raw material. Road construction, bridges, structures, stadiums, whatever we can mention, all is rooted into cement. I think cement is second to the largest share after crude oil. Cement manufacturing, as it is being noticed now, is a bigger business like our brother now, Dangote, is expanding his cement coast, his business coast on cement manufacturing. So I can tell you that in this economy, to forge ahead, to grow better, cement contributes up to 70%. If the foregoing testimonials are anything to go by, Intervention finance from the CBN is an important initiative through which the present administration has anchored its program of economic recovery. Financing has helped not only the immediate sectors in which the credit funding has been applied, but the effect has been felt in other sectors such as paper and packaging. Five interventions came on board, I think, in 2012, late 2012, early 2013. Uh, before now, we got a finance from GTV to fund the purchase of our Wasila generator. The generator is a about fuel, whatever. It uses diesel and more gas. Of course, we thought it's very important for us to do this because if you have to rely on a generator that consumes only diesel, the usage rate, because the enormity of the usage of power for that company, for the, for the plant, it might be very, very cost ineffective to run only a generator. So we thought of this idea of buying this special generator with some 5.6 megawatt capacity, such that we won't have excess capacity to power another line if you know, we go to another line. So we got this fund from GTB but of course at a very high rate of some 15%, 15 The cost to us became very prohibitive. We now thought, what do we do? So this idea of PAVE under the CBN came, and we have put them through, CB, um, through GTB as well, and we got that finance, I think, late, I mean, early 2013. And ever since we got it, of course, we have been enjoying reduced interest rate. It's coming at as low as 70% interest rate as against the film that we were enjoying before. So to that extent, that has actually impacted positively well on our bottom line. Because you can imagine when we are, you know, securing the fund at 50%, now to come down to some 50%, so that's about well over 50% reduction. To that extent, we have enjoyed that advantage from finance angle, and of course, from the technology angle too. The, 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 the plant, the generator plant now, has been a kind of turning point a training ground for a lot of engineers here who now, you know, probably before now didn't have that kind of knowledge. They are, they are coming here for that kind of training and that has, you know, helped the company a lot. It is worth knowing that the expansion of paper products through the benefits of power in the production process directly serves the education sector and product packaging industries amongst others. However, we wanted to demonstrate 
with the PIF that it is doable. Are you getting the point that it is, it is doable? Power can be done in this country. But I, I want to let you know that because of the attempt we made in PIF, we have not seen that it is possible for us to intervene in a more holistic manner in the power sector. And that is why the current um, uh, agenda of the uh, governor, governor um, um, Emefale, is focusing on gas to power. Because we realize that gas has been a major, a major challenge of the jungles in the country. Um, and because for you to generate, for them to generate to full capacity, they needed gas. So we are now refocusing, the agenda is now refocusing on how we finance gas. I will provide enough gas for the gen uh, generating companies in the country. And at that level, you will see that we will address the lighting problem of the common man. However, there's still a lot to be done because uh, not only are we addressing the issues of uh, uh, um, gas to power, we also, that will affect the, um, the jankos. We're also addressing the issue of uh, um, uh, uh, transmission, also addressing the, uh, the problems of uh, um, uh, distribution. We are believing that with this agenda, more resources will be put into the power sector, and that will help uh, relieve the major problem of the common man. The troubled history of the Nigerian airline industry is well known. From the heydays of the defunct Nigeria Airways till now, it has been a litany of incoherent policy, confusion and failure. The CBN having identified the many problems plaguing the industry has rallied in support through intervention finance. In doing so, the CBN targets one key problem that has affected the profitability of the indigenous airline business. Before the introduction of the, the uh, PIF power, and the airline convention, we realized that most of these airlines are having challenges and it has been a drag on the banks. So because of this, because I'm realizing that uh, the transport industry, which include the airlines, is a major factor in economic growth and development. So when this intervention were introduced, it reduces the body, both on the airline operators and the bank because with this fund it has been able to improve the liquidity of the banks and these projects so it has kept most of these airlines in the sky and that's why we can, we can see that uh, the, the the airline industry is now becoming stronger with the efforts of the regulatory authorities everybody can now feel that nigerian sky is safe because they've been able to source funding for maintenance, to run the operations, which is very, very critical. There was a global recession, you know, quite about all over the world, maybe about 60 airlines failed. In Nigeria, quite a couple failed. But that problem was even magnified by the fact that at that time, the cost of funds were single digits. People were borrowing, lending was about 20 something percent. Sadly, today it's still 20 something percent as well. So, without the intervention of CBN at that time, I don't think most industry, you have to realize that CBN did not only intervene in aviation, they did in power, they did in industry. Without that novel developmental finance at that time, I think the Nigerian economy would have collapsed, no doubt. Access to credit through the Power and Airline Intervention Fund has given protection to the airline industry in a way that enables them to return to profitability stabilize and expand their business rather than just handing over their revenues to service endless indebtedness to banks. Local airline operators are thus increasingly able to compete on a level playing field with their foreign counterparts. You know, First Nation we launched in 2011, you know, basically, and it was um, part of our team where some of the whole Bellevue came. And what has happened, that relaunch would not have been possible without the CBN intervention. Okay, and the challenges we still face is across the industry. Cost of funds is still very high. The airport infrastructure is still not very efficient. So it takes, for the same distance between Lagos and Abuja, flying in Nigeria is longer than flying in South Africa because the ATC is more efficient in South Africa. The airport infrastructure is more efficient in South Africa. This is not to say that we haven't had improvement in ATC and airport infrastructure. 
and the public sector that runs this department do not like to hear this feedback. But part of the honest truth is that we still could drive better efficiency. And if you drive an efficiency, an efficient system, you lower cost. So the cost of operating Lagos Abuja, which is ideally a 45, 48 minutes journey, is costing us about one hour, five minutes. If you go on that route six times a day and add the 15 minutes together, that's another Lagos Abuja that you wasted the funds. Uh, and the passengers want to fly low, and the ATC is not efficient. So really, the challenges are still there. The cost of funds is still a major challenge. Okay, But in all honesty, uh, this government has been extremely supportive of this industry. And I think it's unappreciative of the government, not only of our industry, CBN have supported the bank as well. You know, most the banking industry would have collapsed totally without CBN coming in to save the banks that were distressed. The industry would have collapsed totally as well without test out. So across the For the first time in over 20 years, there is excitement brewing over the resurrection of the airline industry, not just in Nigeria, but in the whole West African sub-region. Crucially, the success of the initiative is the flexibility of terms of credit. In all fairness, this fund has been administered in a very transparent and professional manner from what we can see. And, you know, it's impossible to have any program, any program in Nigeria that will satisfy everybody, given the nature of Nigerian the dynamics. The people that are not qualified are bound to criticize the program. I've even had some ignorant analysis that the intervention fund favored the bank. And my question basically is very simple is, if the bank, if you owe a bank, you can't pay, and that bank is charging you 22%, and somebody says, okay, I'll pay that money for you at 7%, you want to tell me you haven't benefited? It's very, it's uninformed. But you have to realize that people that do not qualify to participate in a program will criticize it. But I have not seen anybody that applied, met the criteria, that wasn't advanced the funds. This was a very, I found back of industry very transparent, in, a, in the process, it was very transparent. We didn't have to, I didn't have to go to Bank of Industry. I just, we just dealt with that bank. We didn't have to bend over, you know. So if your bank provided the, you know, sub, you know present your application properly, and you meet the criteria, it will be approved. The march of economic development in Nigeria has seen its most significant progress yet under the current administration of President Goodluck Jonathan. In financial circles, there is great excitement about the course undertaken through the financial intervention initiatives of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Experts and laymen alike agree that the economy is already well on its way to sustainable recovery. We're able to achieve one thing. In the process of doing this, the bank has been able to work with the Minister of, uh, Minister of Aviation. Um, a technical committee was set up that look at, uh, to look holistically what are the issues in the aviation industry. That was looked at, recommendation was made, and that was one of the reasons why the federal government were the federal government was able to begin to take some strides in addressing the issues in the aviation industry. In other countries, other what are called developing or frontier markets of those days, like Malaysia, Indonesia, Brazil, they also set up development development finance institutions, and this is just are taking these countries from their what are called squalor from their bad situation and improve the lives of, of, of their people. Out of the trials that surrounded Nigeria as a nation in the dark days of economic instability, the CBN has forged a tool that is sure to be the springboard of true national economic development. Where countless administrations and policies have failed, the current leadership has fashioned a means through which economic advancement could be achieved through long-tenured fixed interest financing industrialization. Through this, we can go on to build a nation where basic necessities of life, food, clothing, job security, entrepreneurship, health and shelter will be assured for the present and future generations. <laughs>